We're all quite familiar with the Stuxnet token, which is rumored to be launched very soon. But interestingly enough, this blog post was published by Bravos, which is one of the wallets on Stuxnet. This highlighted the tokenomics of the Stuxnet token, and it also mentions how end users are able to receive it if they are active participants of Stuxnet. This could be a hint that if you still have not used this network yet, like myself, it's actually still possible for you to qualify for the airdrop. Today, I'll be showing you all of the steps that I'm taking to try out for this airdrop. And since Stuxnet is already on its mainnet, you are actually using real life money when you're making any transactions. So stick to the end of the video where I show you the amount of fees that I paid when interacting with all of the different decentralized applications. So you get a good gauge of how much Ethereum you should be bridging over to this network. To better understand the strategy that I'm using, we can actually take reference to the Arbitrum airdrop which happened quite recently. These were the six different criteria that determine the number of up tokens that you'll be receiving and you needed to score a minimum of three points before you were eligible to receive any of these tokens. Stuxnet has not given its actual criteria to qualify for its airdrop, but we can still use these criteria here. Since Stuxnet also wants us to be active users, there are these two different criteria where one of them is transactions over time, as well as the number of transactions that you perform or the number of smart contracts that you've interacted on the network. And both of these criteria are quite easy to obtain if you are an active member of the network. Transaction volume could also be another key factor in determining your airdrop, but the amounts here are actually quite high. So if you do not have enough capital to perform such high volume, it may be best for you to just ignore this category altogether. Another criteria that Arbitrum had was that you need to have bridged your funds from another network into Arbitrum. But again, it's not that clear whether you needed to use the official Arbitrum bridge or any other bridges that supported the Arbitrum network will work as well. So if you have met this criteria for the Arbitrum airdrop, do let me know in the comments if it was still possible to meet this criteria even though you did not use the official Arbitrum bridge. Now that we understand the strategy that we'll be performing for Starknet, the next step will be to create a wallet on this network. Network. You may have been farming other airdrops like ZK Sync where you could just use the MetaMask wallet to interact with this network. This is a slight technicality, but even though Starknet is a layer 2 on the Ethereum network, it is actually not compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. All of these networks that are EVM compatible are built using the Solidity programming language, but Starknet actually uses another programming language known as Cairo. So as a result, they are not compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. And since MetaMask only supports EVM compatible networks, you can't add Starknet to your MetaMask wallet. And as a result, you need to create a wallet on these two applications where they specifically only support Starknet. If you have not created a wallet yet, I would strongly suggest that you create a Bravos wallet because there are some perks that you get to receive. And I'll explain that later on in this video. The next step is to bridge your funds over from the Ethereum mainnet or any other Ethereum layer 2. Starknet has its own official bridge where you can bridge your funds from the Ethereum mainnet over to Starknet. And you need to connect your MetaMask wallet that has funds on the Ethereum mainnet as well as your Starknet wallet. So the main problem problem with this mode of transfer is that the gas fees on the Ethereum mainnet are actually very high. So you need to pay about almost $9 worth of Ethereum in USD to process this transaction. It is actually a very expensive method of sending over your funds to Starknet and I actually wouldn't really recommend this method. But since bridging over to Arbitrum was one of the main criteria to get a higher allocation of the airdrop, if you have the funds then I would suggest that you actually do it as this has the highest chance for you to meet this criteria if it actually appears for the Starknet airdrop. However, if you're willing to forego this criteria, then there are actually two other bridges that you can use, which are Orbital Finance as well as Layer Swap. So I tried bridging over some of my Ethereum using Orbital Finance, and it mentions that the Starknet network is under maintenance currently, so you won't be able to use this method for the time being. Orbital Finance actually allows you to bridge your funds across all the various Layer 2s or even to the Ethereum mainnet, and it also has the possibility of an airdrop in the future. And you can find out more about that in the video that I've uploaded in the description below. The other alternative would be to use layer swap, which is somewhat similar to Orbital Finance. So I actually did a transaction today itself and right now it's almost been 50 minutes and I still have not received my funds yet. There's something that you may want to take note of and currently bridging your funds over to Starknet may take quite a while. And if you do know of any other bridges that you can use to bridge your funds over to Starknet, do also let me know in the comments below. After you bridge your funds over to Starknet, the first action that you need to do is to activate your account on the network. Bravos has this prom over here where you need to set up your account on chain and this will cost some gas fees to activate your wallet. It cost me about 49 cents in USD to process this transaction of activating my account. So you can see that the gas fees are actually cheaper compared to the Ethereum network but they are still quite expensive as compared to the Polygon network where most transactions cost less than 10 cents. After you have activated your account, I'll now be showing you why I told you to download a Bravos wallet instead of Argent X. So it has this Pro Score dashboard that you can take a look and what this shows you is 
is the number of protocols that you have interacted with on the network, the total number of transactions that you have performed, as well as the number of transactions that you have performed across the different months. So again, if you go back to the Arbitrum Azure, you can see that transactions over time and the transaction frequency and interaction are two of the main criteria. And Bravos makes it very easy for you to check your progress as you interact with Starknet. Another reason why I recommend downloading the Bravos wallet is because they currently have this NFT and domain giveaway where they've collaborated with Starknet ID and this promotion ends on the 20th of April. This collaboration with Bravos and Starknet ID actually gives you the opportunity to create a dog start domain for only 0.0008 Ethereum which only costs you about $1.50 in USD. So this is actually one of the cheapest ways to get a Starknet ID as usually the cost of these name domains on other networks would be about $5 USD per year. If you do not have a domain name yet, you can go to this icon on the top left hand corner of the Bravos wallet and click on this gear icon. So over here, you'll be given the option to register your bravos.start domain. So this was really what I've done beforehand and you can find the screenshots that I took while I was carrying out this process in the description below as well. After you've minted your bravos.start domain, you can then head to this URL on Starknet ID to mint both your bronze and silver shoes. And you can claim your Starknet ID for $1.50 in USD as well. So I've already done all of these actions. I was able to get both the bronze and silver shoes. So currently Bravos has not released the criteria for the golden shield yet and I'll provide an update once that happens. So now we have funds in our Bravos wallet and we also have a Starknet ID. So now we can go and interact with some of the decentralized applications on Starknet. So if you go back to this dashboard, you can scroll down and view all of the different decentralized applications that are live on this network. So you can sort of use this as a checklist to see which applications you still have yet to interact with. So right now I'll be splitting the different decentralized applications based on its function and the first one that I'm targeting are the decentralized exchanges. So this includes the likes of MySwap, 10 Swap, Jedi Swap, as well as C Swap. So all of them will operate in the same manner where you can swap one of your tokens to another one on this platform. So what I recommend if you only have a small amount of capital is to swap very small amounts between the same tokens. So for example, you can swap from Ethereum to USDC on MySwap and then on 10 Swap, you can swap from USDC back into Ethereum and then you can repeat this process for the other decentralized exchanges as well. So whenever I perform any of these swap transactions, the gas fees cost me about 54 cents, which is again quite high. So this would be the cost that you incur when you're interacting on Starknet. Another action that you can perform on these decentralized exchanges would be to add some liquidity into the DEX's liquidity pools. I did swap a bit of USDT and USDC, so I can sort of make them in a one is to one ratio. So what Starknet does is that it actually combines multiple transactions in a single transaction. So this one single transaction allows me to perform a token approval for both USDT and USDC and then after that deposit my tokens as liquidity. So the gas fee is estimated to be about 74 cents so again it's rather high as well. So let me just add my liquidity and right now since Starknet is still on its alpha minute the transactions can be quite buggy and it may take a while for your transactions to be processed. If you have enough funds you can add liquidity to the other decentralized exchanges as well. Using this same method I actually recommend adding liquidity to the stablecoin pools because this helps to reduce the impermanent loss that you incur. You can view any transactions that are currently pending with this button here and you can click on it where you direct you to the block explorer and over here it mentions it takes about 14 minutes before your transaction is actually posted. So you do need to wait quite a while before your transactions are being processed. You can perform these same transactions on both Jedi Swap and C Swap. and the main thing is to interact with as many smart contracts as possible and to also perform as many transactions as you can. The next category of decentralized applications will be the money market platforms. Currently now the only only one that's available is Nostra Finance and since it's still in its alpha version you're only able to deposit a maximum of these different assets that will be the equivalent of 5 USD per asset. So again I can connect my Bravos wallet and then deposit any of these assets into the platform. For this case I'll just be depositing 1 USDT. So the fees are actually quite expensive and it cost me about $1 worth of Ethereum to perform this transaction. So I currently now have two transactions that are pending and it also be good to keep track of the amount of assets that have used for each transaction, you may eventually run out of all of these assets after your transactions have been processed. Apart from this airdrop, there are many others that you could potentially qualify for and some of them just require you to do a few simple steps. I've created a blog on Mirror where I've released some of these short guides to qualify for these smaller airdrops and you can check all of them out in the description below. Next type of decentralized applications that we'll be interacting with are the NFT marketplaces and the first one is known as Aspec. So currently Aspec does not allow you to mint any NFTs but you can choose to to buy some of these NFTs on 
the marketplace. So if there's any of these NFTs that you like, you can choose to either buy now or make an offer. So just for the fun of it, I'll just make this bid that is higher than the current bid. And the good thing is that this actually costs a very low gas fee of about 16 cents. So the same thing can also be done on Bin Square. And if you have seen my ZK Singh era airdrop guide, you may have remembered this decentralized application as well. So Bin Square allows you to bin your own NFT. You can fill out all of these descriptions and then click on the bin button. So the minting fee is also not too bad at about 51 cents. So I'll just go ahead with this transaction. So another application that you can play around with is this stuck sheet. So I'm actually not too sure what exactly it does. I guess it somewhat acts like a spreadsheet and then you can just randomly include some stuff inside here. And then at the end of it, you can click on this save button. This seems to be a bit more expensive as it costs about 0.01 Ethereum. So I'll be using this application when I'm able to bridge more of my Ethereum. So there are actually two game five projects on Starknet that you can interact with. But for the knife, it still has not been released yet. So it'll be something that you may want to keep an eye out for. And for Go L2, you can actually try out. Again, we just want to try out all of these applications, perform transactions and generate some volume so that we'll be deemed to be an active contributor to Starknet. The applications that I went through are just those that are currently on the mainnet, but there are also some that are still on the testnet and are yet to be launched. The good thing is that we can interact with these applications without spending any real life funds. Similar to the Ethereum mainnet, Starknet also has a goalie testnet. If you'd like to get some goalie Ethereum, it is possible for you to go to this faucet by Starknet. However, the only problem is that you receive 0.002 Ethereum and it may not be enough for you to perform all the transactions that you need on this testnet. If you have Goli ETH on the Ethereum mainnet, you can use the Starkgate Goli bridge to bridge your funds over to Starknet's Goli testnet. Goli Ethereum is becoming a very rare commodity and you can check out my video in the description where I show you nine of the main methods that are used to get these testnet tokens. After you receive your funds on the Goli testnet, you need to activate your account as well. Right now, the congestion is also quite high on Starknet Goli and it takes about three minutes before the transaction can be processed. Similar to the mainnet, we want to perform as many transactions as possible and interact with lots of smart contracts on the various testnet decentralized applications. The first one that we can try out is the ZK LAN and we can deposit some of our Ethereum into this platform. The gas fees are actually quite high on Starknet Goalie. You may want to make sure that you bridge a sufficient amount of ETH tokens from the Goalie testnet into Starknet Goalie. Cswap was one of the decentralized exchanges on the mainnet but we can also use it on the Goalie testnet as well where you can swap some of our Ethereum to other cryptocurrencies like DAI. Even though my Ethereum amount is worth about $18, I think that the slippage is quite high at the current moment. So the amount of DAI that I actually receive is only $1.70. Gas fees are also quite high at about $6 for this swap transaction. Similar to the mainnet, you can also go to this Bravos dashboard and interact with all of these different decentralized applications on the testnet as well. You can also purchase your Starknet ID on the Goli testnet and the fees that you incur are actually quite expensive as compared to the amount that you're paying on the mainnet. Starknet ID also has this quest board on Goalie where you need to complete certain tasks and by doing so, this could help you to qualify for a future airdrop if Starknet ID does decide to release a token on this network. If you would like to view all of the fees that you have incurred when transacting on Starknet, what you can do is to copy your wallet address and then paste it on this Voyager block explorer. This will show you your wallet address in the form of a contract and you can click on it and you can scroll all the way down to see all the transactions that you've previously performed. You can click on all of these transaction hashes to view the records of the transactions that you've made. And what I like about Voyager is that it shows the USD value of the Ethereum that you spend. So all in all, I spent about $6.40 in USD to process about 11 different transactions on Starknet. This is actually not too expensive and I do think that I spent much more in terms of gas fees on ZK Sing era while I was trying to farm that airdrop too. Let me know in the comments if you still have any questions regarding farming for the Starknet airdrop and you can check out my next video here where I show you how to farm for the ZK Sing airdrop.